Baker coming to you from Old Town Mariposa where history lives and uh, as you may know I uh, am one of the proprietors at Betts Gold Coin downtown Mariposa and uh, I have with me today an old friend companion and uh, patron uh, Randy you want to mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about yourself how did, you, how did you get here? Well, I taught science down in Fresno in the Central Valley for about 15 years and spent all this time being fascinated with the mountains and uh, bringing nature groups up and kids up to Yosemite and always went through the beautiful historic Mariposa and finally said, why not just move here and base out here? So save, save a lot of money on gas. Huh? Absolutely, and I've always loved the history of California and the wildlife in this area. We have a lot of history and a lot of wildlife. Mm -hmm. Natural history and, and, and natural Absolutely. wildlife. Um, and you have kind of a unique job now. You're not teaching anymore. You were teaching science? Yes. And as I came up here, I was a science teacher for a short time, but then uh, eventually found my way over to the Mining and Mineral Museum, which uh, I mean, you guys were pretty instrumental in this town. Uh, it was 100 years in San Francisco, and we do house the official state gem and mineral collection for California, which is a very significant scientific collection, but they had to get moved out of San Francisco. The rents are a little too high there, so Mariposa jumped on the opportunity to move that museum here. And then uh, right around uh, uh, 1999, we became a state park. And the state parks has a much bigger focus on making it an educational tool rather than just a scientific collection. And I think that uh when we started out, it was the uh, Motherlode Reunion was the theme that we had because we were bringing the gold collection, the mineral collection, back to the Motherlode where it originated in many ways. But now I think that, and, and, the, and the original curators uh, took a deep interest in the scientific presentation. The, the collection was significantly modified from its uh, old uh, roots back in the Ferry Building. Uh, and uh, it became a, a more of a scientific uh, display, and, and now we, you've turned it into an actual educational asset. Um, and we get a lot of classrooms up here doing uh, science in geology, landform, and of course there's also the economic history of mining and geology right. too. Um, but I want to go back uh, maybe a little bit into... Uh, it, of course, it's an important scientific uh, uh, collection, but at the same time, it it tells an important story about our mining heritage in Mariposa County and in the state of California. And in many ways, the state of California wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for, you know, the way it is. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for those early days, early mining days. Um, so maybe we could start out there with uh, with some of the the heritage uh, of our our mining. Business. Well, yeah. Well, long before the collection came here, Mariposa was right in on the ground floor of uh, being a real mining town. And I'm looking like a 49er today, but I was going to mention that the 40. And we do have a we. Uh, but on, you don't on, have any uh, dirt under your. Well, no, I'm I'm in town. I got my town duds oh, on watch, today. Yeah, yeah, coming into town. So this is and basically day. most of the 49ers kind of went down to lower elevations in the winter. But the thing is, John C. Fremont was here very early on in the gold rush, and the 49ers and the gold panners did have their part in the story. But he knew as well as everyone else that the huge amount of gold underground was going to sponsor large mines. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Fremont was a forward-thinking man, and he wanted to set up his base camp here in Mariposa, and he did. And the large mines that were around here, our museum building even looks like a mine, those were a big employer and a huge importance to the economy of California. Mm -hmm. A lot of the people all through the generations here, if they didn't work directly in the mines, they worked in the lumber industry, and they supplied those miners uh, with all the supplies. And we also had a, when you talk about the lumber industry, I was learning from an old friend of mine, uh, there was uh, another side to logging uh, with respect to stoking the fires to feed the, the, the steam engines that drove the mills. Uh, Those were also, both mining technology and logging technology took a quantum leap during the years just following the early gold rush to really get these resources out in a big industrial way. One of the, uh, one of the stories that we had, uh, the History Center, uh, Ron Loya from the History Center here last weekend, and he was telling us about 
how we evolved as a community, as a culture. Uh, when we became a, a, a mining processing facility, uh, the, the actual grinding up of the ore and hard rock mining as opposed to the plaster, early plaster mining, uh, we became a community. We yeah. had, mm -hmm. had established communities, we had uh, uh, people working here, we had families, uh, mm -hmm. so they built churches, and of course Mariposa was the center of, of government for a very large county. We were the largest county in the state during in 1850, and uh, nine other counties have been carved out of what used to be uh, original Mariposa. But also, again, like you said, that, that mar large industrial mining mills were developed here, and uh, all the best mines in mining technology were really trying to improve those things. Mm -hmm. And there were quite a few of those big mines here in Mariposa. We do, uh, we bring a lot of school kids come up because this is a big part of our California curriculum uh, to understand the history of the mining. But then also we are the state mineral collection. It was all about the minerals to begin with. Mm -hmm. And even though gold was the big exciting one, we've got gorgeous mineral crystals from all over the world and lots of good valuable minerals that we still mine today. All over. Uh, well, it's, this is probably uh, one of the better mineral collections in the U.S., is for, from my understanding. It's the largest state mineral collection in the United States. Yeah. And, uh, and some of the specimens in here are, are definitely world class. I've talked to visitors from all over the world, and, and uh, there are people actually who come from, from different parts, particularly mm -hmm. in Germany. I've talked to several people from Germany who travel here because of the... Uh, the significance of some of the, the exhibits that we have here. It's not only a scientific educational tool, but it's also a, a, a really important <coughs> collection of minimal specimens. Um, but Yeah, you're seeing a lot of these rare minerals, and some of the ones we have are actually quite rare. Our state gemstone is one of the rarest on earth. Uh -huh. And then another thing that people can see in our museum, which few people have ever seen, is crystallized gold which usually gets crushed in the mill. And uh, the Frico Nugget is one of the, is the largest crystalline specimen remaining from the gold rush days. Mm -hmm. In those days, most of those type of gold is crushed in the mill, or even if it wasn't, it would have been melted down. Now today, crystallized gold is worth far more than gold, and we'll see some of it there. Quite a collection. And uh, maybe we were talking with uh, Mia lately uh, about hospitality and, and, and the visitors that we get here. You get uh, visitors from all over the world and oh, uh, yeah. that must be an amazing experience from uh, try to show off our collection and to explain the the history, the traditions, the legacies that we have here. Oh yeah, well we have a short history in California. I mean I talk to Europeans some of these people have furniture older than California in their houses, but we have an exciting Wild West crammed a lot of stuff into our history. And this town is really developed to, or maintained, to have that feeling. And like you say, where history lives. Now we do a lot of things, there's always some sort of events going out at the fairgrounds. We're, we're at the fairgrounds, so we piggyback on a lot of that. But we do get a lot of school kids that coming in to learn about the history and how mining and minerals were not only a part of Mariposa and California, but the whole world economy at that time. And uh, again, there's always some sort of festival or Civil War reenactment or Butterfly Festival, something going on. Mm -hmm. And again, if you check on the Mariposa uh, Chamber of Commerce, they have a great website, I think, uh, mariposachamber.org, and they always, something is going on in town all through the year. You know, Randy, I, I get the feeling that you kind of enjoy your job. I really do, I, and I get as many chances as I can to go play 49er, but then also, like you said, we meet a lot of people from around the world, but I get a lot of old timers and miners. I learn from some of our, our uh, visitors as well, and it's a great amount of fun to talk to the old timers and say, I did work in that mine, and I lose that machinery, and that's always a fun thing. Yes, and uh, that's... Uh... That's what we talk about when we say when history lives. It's uh, it, you know it's, it's kind of hard to get you. It, it sounds like a catchy phrase, but it's it really describes the the real life of, of uh, surviving up here yeah. and and thriving up here. And between what we do between our museum and the Mariposa History Museum right down the road, 
Uh, if you want to get a dose of history, it's a perfect day trip to come from the valley, get out of the fog and see two museums, walk the historic streets and shop, and back home, it's a great day. It makes the, uh, the textbooks a lot more interesting. Oh, absolutely. We have a lot of teachers that have been coming year after year. We're part of their regular curriculum. Well, is there anything you'd like to say? Uh, I'm beginning a, a cue. From the I family. do want to mention, we do have our biggest event of the year, is the, our Gem and Mineral Show, where we have our Gold Rush Camp. You can pan for gold, talk to a 49er, see all kinds of rocks and minerals. And that's April 11th and 12th this year. And, and we'll have you back for uh, a little more uh, in-depth discussion of that show. That's a big show. It, people from all over the world come to visit that, uh, that, that show. But uh, for now, I'm going to have to sign off. And I hate to say goodbye, but uh, I want to thank everybody out there for joining us. And Randy, I want to thank you for, Thanks for having being, me, being here with me. And uh, we, uh, we would like you to come back and visit us again soon. Uh, we're here on a weekly basis with new shows uh, about the background and history of, of Mariposa, where history really does live. And uh, thank you for joining me. And See you next. Where can you see some of the finest historic gems and minerals? Nestled in the rolling foothills of Mariposa, California, along the historic Highway 49, lies the California State Mining and Mineral Museum. This museum features many different mining techniques, one of which is hard rock mining. The museum contains a replica of a mining tunnel that shows how miners drilled and blasted loose the gold ore deep in underground tunnels. The museum also features a 3D depth map of all the tunnels in this area. While mining in the caves, the miners would use picks to chip at the coarse walls to find the gold veins. After the miners transported the gold-filled ore out of the tunnel, they would put it through a stamp mill. Stamp mills crush the ore. The finely crushed ore is then mixed with water and mercury. The gold combines with the mercury to form amalgam. The amalgam is collected and treated to extract the gold. When mining gold from rivers and streams, called placer mining, the miners would use either a gold pan, a dredge, or a sluice box. A gold pan is used by scooping up sand and swirling it around in the pan so that the heavier pieces of gold are separated from the rest of the sand. A sluice box is basically a larger automatic gold pan. With water running over it, miners shovel sand into it and rock it back and forth so the gold is separated from the sand. A dredge uses a vacuum to suck the rocks and sand from the riverbed. The dredge then emits it into a sifter where water runs over it and separates the gold. The Mining and Mineral Museum became a state park in July of 1989 and it features one of the largest collections of specimens in the U.S. The official collection of gems and minerals were housed in the Ferry Building in San Francisco for 88 years before they were moved to Mariposa. Welcome to the Gold Coin. You have a seat wherever you'd like. Just will never forget Where I'm from and who I am The red pink birds is my goodbye song Knows I'm leaving this time this This is the real U.S. dollar, the gold coin, and it's yours if you can answer one simple question for me.